Glory to your name, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be glorified in this last and evil day. You know, I, I thank God for all that he has done and, and all that he's doing in this hour for his people. For those that have a mind and a desire to go all the way with the Lord. And the thing about heaven is it is a, being a prepared place. It, nobody get there by accident. We must prepare our hearts and our minds to get there. And so the, the thing about it, when we start on this course, we got to stay the course. You cannot start on straight street and get to heaven on Broadway. Because when God brings you out of sin, he brings you out of a world of darkness. He brought you out to stay out. Come on and bless him up in here, somebody. Anybody been called out of darkness into the marvelous act? Look at your neighbor and say, I came out to stay out. Oh, bless his holy name. Glory to God. You say, why is that important, Bishop? Because my enemy is beckoning for me. The, Jesus said that the friendship of this world cometh, but it has nothing in me. The devil is steady beckoning for you to come, come on back. Come on back to the drinking. Come on back to the smoking. Come on back to the fornicating. Come on back to sin. But I came out to stay out. Oh, glory to God. And I'm just glad to be in the world, but not of the world. So that I can fulfill God's divine destiny for my life. And that's to let my light so shine before men that they may see my good works and glorify my Father which is in heaven. The life that I live is only because of him. I'm, I'm not in sin anymore, only because of him. Because he provided a way and I accepted him as my Lord and my Savior. And, and I came out just to stay out. And saints, we, you got to realize that in this day and time, the devil is calling you. He's calling you. And listen, we have been instructed. That listen, that day, that day shall not come. Except there be a great falling away first. And it, what's amazing is that people that you once knew that were saved and sanctified. You hadn't seen them in a while. But when you see them now, they're totally different. They're, oh, they still got a Hickamo shine bow C9. They still got a shout. But they, they don't look nothing like what God did for them way back in the day. Amen. They didn't stop following after the holy and godly standards of Jesus Christ. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say his standards will not change. You can be seated. And so this is what we must realize in order for us to get to heaven. We started this journey. And we must continue. When God saved us, he saved us off of Broadway and put us on straight street. He realized that we cannot get to heaven on Broadway. So Bishop, why not on Broadway? Because on Broadway, everything go on. And this is when you look at the church world today, it epitomizes Broadway. Some of everything under the sun. It's going on. But Jesus Christ, the word of God incarnate, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not and he will not change. I want to call your attention to the book of St. John, the sixth chapter. And I want to begin reading at the 53rd verse. It says, Then Jesus said unto them, 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat, eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which come down from, came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Now they heard this these, these, these powerful saying. Verse number six, it says, Many therefore are his disciples. When they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured, added, he said unto them, does this offend you? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, if the spirit that quickeneth, the, it's the, flesh, the spirit that quickened it and the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For because Jesus knew in the beginning who they were that believed not and who, who should betray him. Now, let's skip down to verse, the 66th verse. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you go also? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. The words of eternal life. The words of eternal life. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, stay with God. Now, th this is what's powerful. This is what's powerful. Now, the disciples heard the word. All of them. They heard what Jesus said. But the Bible said that this saying troubled some of the others. And it, it, they began to say, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? Now, somebody was offended at what they heard. So how do you know what... What they were offended because Jesus answered, does this offend you? <laughs> the, 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 this word, is, the, the, something, is it something about this word that you don't like? And the thing about it is, it, when we looking for a church, you're not looking for a parking lot full of folk. Can, can I just preach right there? Because this is how folks are being bamboozled. Because, oh, they got a bunch of cars over there. But the bottom line, you don't choose a church by how beautiful an edifice it is. You don't choose a church by how well-known the pastor is. Don't care if you don't ever like it. Now, the disciples that were with Jesus fell out because he said something that they didn't like. And they said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? And then we come to find out that 70 left them at one time. Never to follow him again. So we know it, 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 we know it more than that, but, but we know at least 70 went to hell. 
never to follow him again. So how can you say that, Bishop? That's a bold statement. Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except he come by me. Now, if you reject me, you didn't only reject me, but you reject my Father that sent me. So that my Father that you have rejected, he's not going to let you into heaven. And so now when we come to a very pivotal point in our walk, in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Because what Jesus said was tight, but it was still right. It was strong, but it showed enough wasn't wrong. But somebody got mad and said, I'm not going to follow him no more. Now, I like this because Jesus looked at the 12. Not to beg them not to leave him. Not to beg him, saying, please don't go. But he looked at them and said, hey, they gone. You, you want to go with them? But the disciples looked at him and said, Master, where are we going to go? Where are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. Now, the bottom line is they were concerned about going to heaven. You got the word for everlasting life. You got the words that going to cause us that we can live forever if we receive it into our hearts. Come on and talk back to me. And so he, he let us know that, hey, this is the way you pick a church. Because of the truth. It wasn't about what, what Jesus said. It was about what Peter said. You have the words of eternal life. And so if the word is not there, then Jesus is not there. And I don't have no business being there where Jesus is not at. Come on and talk back to me. But see, in this glass and evil day, Somebody got to open their mouth and sound the alarm. Somebody got to preach the whole counsel of God. See, this word, is, it, it's not going to come and make you feel good all of the time. It's not going to make you shout. Sometimes it'll make you a, a whole lot madder before it make you glad. Because it's trying to rip that flesh that's trying to take you to hell. Come on and talk back to me. Don't you know that in your flesh and in my flesh, well, no good thing. My flesh don't want to do right. Your flesh don't want to do right. Come on and bless him. But see, in order to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to eat of his flesh. And you got to drink of his blood. But see, somebody, they took that thing literally like they're saying eat of his natural flesh. But no, he's talking about his word. And somebody is offended at the word of God, but they're saying that they love him, but they don't life don't want to line up with the whole counsel of God. But let me tell you something, Deuteronomy 8 and 3 has not changed. Not Matthew 4 and 4, not Luke 4 and 4, that man shall not live by bread alone or by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And see, in order to get us in a place with God, God, God got to show us where we're dirty at. Listen, if you look, you see people washing clothes, you automatically assume that the reason they're washing them, the clothes is because they're dirty. <laughs> that, that, that makes sense? Because you see folks that washing clean clothes. Yeah. <laughs> they said, you know, they six bricks out of low. It's something missing. But the reason you wash it because they're dirty. And when people come to God, before you can get them saved, you got to get them lost. That makes sense? They got to see that they need a savior. And so you're dealing with the sin aspect. And you tell them about the love of God and you let them know why Jesus died. He came to deliver you. He didn't have nothing to do with the other, other day exchanging gifts. That wasn't what he came for. He came to save his people according to Matthew one twenty one, to save his people from their sin. This is the purpose of Jesus coming. He came to save his people from their sin. And so that being said, 
So now, to save the people from their sin, so what is sin? The people got to know that what sin is. You got to deal with the sin factor in every one of our lives. Sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is going just the opposite of what God's word said. And so now it's our responsibility to show them what's, what's right and what's wrong. And, and so somebody's going to get offended when you start dealing with sin. <clears throat> Your flesh like the sin. Mine like the sin. The flesh don't, don't want to pray. It don't want to fast. It don't want to study. Come on, talk back to me. No, 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 no. It just want to do what it want to do. It, it likes sin. It likes sin. The flesh loves sin. And the Bible says they love darkness rather than light because the deeds are evil. They don't love darkness because they live in holy. They don't love darkness because they live in right. They love darkness because they're in darkness. They are partakers of darkness. But oh my God, when the light is turned on, and that it dispels the darkness in our lives, it shows you how mixed up and how messed up that we are and, and that what Jesus Christ want to do for each and every one of us. And, and so now, the word of God is the only thing that's going to save us. And people are running away from the truth. Let, let me help us out a little bit. People are looking for rump shaking church. You know that don't jump and shout church. That's not the church that Jesus accepted. He said, Upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And see, Satan has prevailed in these churches. Satan is running rapid in these churches. Come on and talk back to me. And, and Satan, let me tell you something. Saints, let me help us out just a little bit. And you wondering why you, you, you're going through some things. You're dealing with some things. And my God, Satan know what God is doing for you. Satan know what God has in store for you. And if you ever want to know whether you were saved or not, that's a sure sign. That's why Satan fighting you because he's trying to call you back into darkness, into the marvelous light. He see what God is doing for you. He's blessing your life. And let, let me tell you something. This life that we live is a life that we live by faith. Did that make sense? The just <laughs> shall live by faith. When you hear this word and you receive this word into your life, you got to believe God is doing exactly what that word said. You got to believe that. You got to believe it. And I don't care how the devil come and fight. I don't care how the devil come and tempt you. You got to believe in your heart. I'm saved. You got to open your mouth and say, I'm not the same anymore. Oh, bless him. And I don't care how you try to take me back down the Broadway. I know what the Lord has done for me. My God, that's why I'm going to bless him with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul, and with all of my strength. Somebody ought to bless him. Oh, glory to God. And this is the beauty of being saved because you know you're not the same anymore. Uh, God, when God has washed you, my God, with the full of soul, uh, God, you will cleanse you, my God, through the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, God, don't you worry about uh, all of this other stuff. You just stay focused on the word of God. <laughs> the devil, devil is doing what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to tell you you're not saved. He's supposed to tell you if you had God in your life, you wouldn't be going through this and you wouldn't want to go through that. But you got to stand up on the flat foot on the word of God and say, that, that's why I'm saying, I know I'm saying, because they that will live godly in this present world shall suffer persecution. And I know this, that through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom of God. And I know this, that if we are suffer with it, I'll reign with it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You got to have a mind and a desire. You better run on and see what the end going to be. <clears throat> oh, bless him. Listen, it's saying if you were saved, you wouldn't have all of these problems. The Bible says endure hardness. 
as a good soldier. You just got to endure it. You just got to endure it. And I want to tell you this. Why should I endure it? Because he that shall come will come and will not tarry. And it's just a matter of time that he going to show up. And when he show up, he going to show out. And you ought to bless him right now with every ounce of your being. I'm not going to let nothing, my God, hinder me from running out and seeing what the end going to be. Let me get back to the word. Jesus turned to the disciples and said, will you go also? Peter said, Master, where will we go? When you have the words of eternal life. You got the words that are going to help us to, to, to have a, be partakers of everlasting life and the glory and the bliss of heaven. See, this word is what's going to come. It's going to mold you. and going to make you. This word is what's going to shape you. I got this word is what's going to prepare our hearts and our minds to be able to stand before God and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, in a thou into the joy of the Lord. And this is why I love this word, because that, look at your neighbor and say, power in this word. <laughs> oh, yes, that power in this word. Oh, bless his holy name. I got this word. Look at your name. Say this word has cleansing power. According to St. John 15 and 3, you're clean through the word that I've spoken unto you. According to Psalm 119 and 9, what will them shall the young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed there too, according to the word of God. I'm telling you, the word got cleansing power. Oh, bless his holy name. And, and not only that, but this word got, it, it has deliverance power. According to St. John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. I go, where are we going to go when you have the word of truth? It's the word that's going to set me free. I don't want nothing that's going to leave me bound. I don't want nothing that's going to make me feel justified in sin. Because when I stand before God, I know this. According to Matthew 5 and 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I can't t t take the chance of coming before God in my heart not being pure but I need a word that can purify me I need a word my God can get out the crimson stain of sin come on and bless him up in here my God it'll set you free and not only that look at your neighbor say it can, it has, the word will set you free and it'll keep you free Oh, bless him. Well, that, that's the best part of all. Not only will it set you free, but it has the power to keep you free. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so people trying to look for something that, that's, going, that, that's satisfying and gratifying the flesh. This is why the 70 left Jesus because it came against the flesh. The flesh didn't want, didn't, didn't want to receive all of this word. But see, let me tell you something. That part of the word that they rejected, that was 2 Thessalonians. I mean, 2 Timothy 4, I mean, 3 and 16. This is all scripture. It's given by the inspiration of God. All of it. Every one of them is given by the inspiration of God. All of this is God breathed. That part that you don't like and the part that you do like, it's God breathed. See, nobody likes the word that's coming and going to cut their flesh. Nobody, they don't like that. They, they like a jump and shout to where it, it just say blessing, 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 blessing. When you curse, 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 curse. Come on here. God is not blessing you in your sin. He said, I bless you if you walk in my stature and you keep my commandment. But then he goes on to say, but I, if you don't walk in my stature, if you don't keep my commandment, I'll curse you with a curse. And so this is why we got to love the word of God with all of our hearts, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and with all of our strength. See, the devil doesn't care about you having things. The devil just don't want you to hold on to the word of God. Because when the law of God is in your heart, then your feet won't slide. 
according to Psalm 37, 31. When, when this word is in there, this word is in there. Oh God, this is why in Psalms, oh God, 119 and 11, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. But if you're not getting truth, this is why your lives stay the same. Jumping and shouting don't get sent out. But only the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ gets sent out. And I need a word that will get sin out of my life. And I'm just glad for, for somebody that will tell me the truth. <laughs> don't tell me you love me and don't ever tell me the truth. And this is how people are being deceived. You know, I don't have no problem because of people of, of intellect. But when people are intellect are the most cunning and deceitful people in the pulpit today. Because with all of these thousand dollar words. Now, I just like to ask a, a question. Now, when I look at Luke 13, verse 3 and verse 5. Now, you don't need a degree to understand that. It's plain. It's simple. It's cut and it's dry. Except you repent. You shall all likewise perish. You're all going to hell. See, we need people in the poor pit that's going to kiss. What do you mean, kiss? I'm not talking about puckering up. I'm talking about keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Make it so plain that a fool will not err. Come on here and talk back to me. So you didn't have to worry about Peter and the other disciples? My God, trying to use $1,000 words because the, the one that had the $1,000 words one that looked at them and said they perceived that they were ignorant and unlearned men. But they had the most important part. My God, they had been with the Lord. And the most of these folks have don't know God. You've been to seminary. You've been to the school of theology and divinity and still don't know who Jesus is. I don't care how many alphabets you got behind your name. It doesn't mean that you know God. Oh, bless his holy name. It ain't no sense in folks trying to feel small because they didn't go to this, this, this school and that school. But let me tell you something. I haven't seen none of these devils. My God, God used them like he did Peter and some of the other. My God, he was just an entrepreneur. My God, he had a little small fishing uh, uh, business. But he had a heart that God could use. And folks think that I have to be all of this in order for God to use. All you got to do is be willing, my God, to submit yourself unto God and to present your body unto him as a living sacrifice so God can walk in you, so God can talk in you. I got folks feeling small. I got, I don't feel small among money, you devil. I got, I don't care how many degrees you got. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you're going to hell. See, now watch this here. It said holy men spake and they were moved by the Holy Ghost. How God, if you don't have the spirit of God, you are not a heal and you hell bound. But old Peter, how God, he spake as he was moved by the Holy Ghost. Come on, the other, they spake and they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And am I making sense up in here? But let, let me go to the flip side of that. Somebody hurt you, I felt you. Now, well, Paul was, he, he was an educated man. You're absolutely right. But he, uh, and, and you, have you not read in Philippians? <laughs> that I count all this stuff but dumb. That I might win Christ. Now, God, I don't count all of this. Uh, my God, that they're, they're using all of this. I got to justify them. But Paul saw himself as lost and was in need of a savior. Bless him up in here, somebody. I got this is why I got blessed a day, according to Matthew 5 and 8, with hunger and thirst out the righteousness. For they shall be filled. My God, you ought, you ought to want a, a place where righteousness is being taught. My God, men are not making excuses. They're saying, don't do as I do, but do as I say do. No, no, you're looking for a real man of God. That's saying, follow me as I 
follow Christ. When the devil start walking slew foot, it's time for you to move yourself around. Because people are mixed up. People are messed up. People, let, let, me, let me deal with something right quick. Because we're living in a day and time that the folks are being deceived. And folks are feel, feeling justified in sin. <laughs> because the people are saying that there's somebody saved in every church. That's damnable teaching. That's damnable teaching. And so now when we come, we got to find out what the word of God said. And it was Paul that talked about his affiliation, his relationship with Pharisees. He said concerning the law, I was blamed. He said, I was, I was off one of the straightest sect. But then, when he came in contact with Jesus Christ, he realized that, hey, I can't be a Pharisee and a Christian. And it was Paul that said, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And so if Paul was saying, I was one of the straightest sect, he said, concerning the law, I will blame this. He said, I excel many of my own equal. Oh, glory to God. And look, I said, Paul got it. Paul got it. But oh, my God, when it concerning the word of God, he saw himself that filthy. He saw himself as undone. He saw himself, my God, as unclean. And so now he had to realize, I got to come out from among Pharisees. You can't be a Baptist and stay safe. I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. Because they got their own doctrine. The Methodism got their own doctrine. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I got, but you got the whole fast to the doctrine of the apostles and the prophets and the prophets. My God, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. I got, you got to be a, a part of a word. Now God, that not only can, can cleanse you, but it'll keep you safe. I got, not only I got, does this word sanctify, but it'll keep on sanctifying you. It'll keep on purifying you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, this word is calling for us to die out to self. It's calling for us to modify. It's calling for us to crucify the deeds of the flesh. You got to put it to death. And so when Christ liveth on the inside, as long as sin is reigning in your life, truth is absent. But when truth becomes prevalent in your life, now, God, the truth take that, you know, it's the only king that sits upon the throne of your heart. Then sin got to move along. So you can't be a sinner and a saint at the same time. And you got, I don't know where these devils come from. And some of this coming from all these educated idiots. Come out, you are a, a sinning Christian. I want you devils and all of your degrees to show me in scripture where there's such thing as a sinning Christian. Because if you can be a Christian and still sinning, Jesus Christ died in vain. <laughs> he came to save us from our sin. Come on and bless him. And so now, and see, this is why you, you got to preach it just like Jesus preached it in, in St. John 16. You got to keep it tight. You got to keep it strong so the people know that it's not wrong. And so you don't change this word. And so, when I let me back up just a little bit, there are many that I know when I first got saved that was saved, but they gone back to the weak and the beggarly elements of the world. They done gone back. My God, they don't look like they used to look. My God, they don't walk like they used to walk. They don't talk like they used to talk. Come on, talk back to me. When you talk about Pentecostal, when you talk about apostolic, my God, they, they had a certain standard. When you talked about holiness. They had a certain standard. When you talk about the church of God in Christ and Bishop Mason Day, they had a certain standard. 
I don't care if you don't ever like my God, but now when you look at the, the so-called church of God, that once upon a time, my God, they had heart, uh, godly standard. You know, it's amazing that even the church of the Nazarene had godly standard. But all of these folks have fallen away from the truth. My God, they have given away to error because people, just like it was with Aaron, Moses in the mountain seeking God, and the people telling Abraham, said, we don't know what that happened to Moses. He's been up there a long time. He could be dead for all we know. But what we need, we want a God over us. We want a God. And so Aaron, the reason they're talking to Aaron, because he was a smith. He could, he was fall, he could shape the gold and stuff. And he told him to bring your gold, bring, bring your rings, your earrings, all of that stuff. And throw it in the pot. And then after that, it had to melt it down. So he formed it. He shaped it. He fashioned it. Then when Moses did show up, then he told a lie. He said, no, all I did is throw it in there and it jumped out the fire. The calf jumped out the fire. Liar, liar, your tail going to be on fire. But my God, he stood up. My God, and told him, my God, did this what y'all want? My God, I'm going to make you going to drink the, the bitterness of this thing. And so you got to have a mind and a desire. If you started out with God, you better go all the way with the Lord. And you know that the song, since it's not a romp shaking song, you don't hear a song no more. So I'm going all the way with the Lord. Anybody say that's a testimony within itself? Anybody feel like that's your testimony? That I'm going all the way with the Lord. And I don't care who go back. I don't care who look back. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Woo! Blessing somebody. So ain't nobody gonna get them to shake their rump on that. See that that that's convicting. But somebody they, they won't rump shaking music. They rather shake their tail felt. They don't have no God and all of this fool. But my God, let me tell you something. When you enter to the doors of TGAC, my God, all the entertainment that you didn't get before you got here, my God, it's all about God. And on the sign say, welcome to truth. You're coming in. That whatever you're bound by, that you can be set free. And let me tell you something. Young men and young women, I got old men and old women, are never be set free because people, they think that they have to put up with this foolishness now God that exists in the church world today and the church world is inundated my God with lies and false doctrine my damnable teaching <laughs> Ella Hunter give me second Peter let's look at verse 2 I mean chapter 2 start at verse 1 because this is the day and the time that we're living in. Read the book. There were false prophets also among the people. Wait a minute. He didn't say they might. He said there shall be false teachers among you. Come on. They coming in with all these damnable heresies, all the damnable teaching, all the damnable doctrine. Come on. Uh-oh. Now people are denying the Lord that have saved them. He bought them. He shed his blood. We've been bought with a price. And now it's to glorify God in our spirit and in our body that belongs to him. Read. You're going to believe a lie and be damned. Because you have not received the love for the truth. And let, let me tell you something. And just like these 70, they left Jesus because they didn't have a love for the truth. My God, they didn't want to hold on, my God, to the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And look at your neighbor and say, let us go back, my God, to the old landmark. My God, let us seek for the old path. Where in is a good way. And guess what they said? We will not walk therein. But I don't care. My God, who have forsaken the old path but my God we gonna stay on the holy highway my God we 
going to keep on standing for the honor that's the way the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need somebody, I got men and women, boys and girls, that refuse to change. I don't want to be holy most of the way. We got to do this thing like the Bible said. According to 1 Thessalonians 521 you hold fast to that which is good. You hold on to the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. And then he comes to the, the 23rd verse and says, the very God of peace. He sanctifies holy. He sanctifies entirely. He sanctifies us completely. God, God don't want your heart. I beg to differ with you. I don't need nobody. My God, tell him, come bring me that chair over there, sir. Come on, I don't have much time. I should, I should have got me one of them other. Thank you, sir. God ain't never called nobody to come sit in no chair. No. God wants you to come before him and broken. You come before God and you fall on your face and you're crying out, Lord, Lord. What must I do to be saved? You come crying out, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me from my sin. I got this, all of this old foolishness, all of this tradition, and you and nothing is going to save you about the chair. When you come before God, you come before God broken. You come to God to save you. You come before God Realizing how unworthy you are. That God would give his very best for the earth worse. That makes sense? Well, let me help you to understand. While we were yes, sir. Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus didn't die for the godly. He died for the ungodly. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, shall not go to hell, but have everlasting life. Uh, God, without Jesus Christ, without the shedding of the blood, we were doomed for hell. But I thank God when it looked like there was no way out, he provided a way out. He gave his son, and his son gave his life. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. I deserved hell, but you gave your son. I thank you that you granted me a reprieve. It doesn't matter if your name is on some church roll. Only the pure in heart gonna see God. If your life is defiled with sin, you going to hell. Y'all ain't saying much. Folks playing game. But let me let me tell the hooches, the hoes, the punks, and the pimps and all this stuff. Because God had not killed you yet. But the Bible said because execution against a, a evil work, because God is not executing judgment, the judgment against an evil work is not executed speedily. Then the hearts of men are fully set to do evil. And they're saying, I must be okay. God hadn't killed me yet. But if you think that's a, okay, but let me help you out right there. That he dealt with Jezebel and her whoredom. He dealt with Jezebel and her whoredom for the space of 11 years. He gave her 11 years to repent, but she never turned from her whoredom. Uh, God, she had a husband, but it didn't stop her from whoring around. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. It didn't stop her. My father was seducing the prophets of God, the men of God. I uh, got to commit adultery, but oh my God, God got a man. Uh, God, God got a man, or should I say God got men that's not going to bow 
my God, to the woman dressed there. He don't care how much junk she got in the trunk. He doesn't care how big a leg is. My God, oh, he cares about fulfilling the will of God. She thought Jehu was well, a pieback preacher. But oh my God, he wasn't looking for a good time. My God, he, when he came in the dress reel, he came in there with a mission. He came there. And so she did like she did all of the other time. The Bible says she tied her head. My God, she painted her face and maybe had some eyelashes that looked like my finger. My God, waving at the head, Jehu. And my God, Jehu looked up and saw that hoist woman. And he said, who's on the Lord's side? And the Bible said two and three and he stood up and he said cast her down and not God he, he wasn't trying to cast her and they cast, catch her in the chariot and ride off into the sunset when that whore hit the ground he ran over with the chariot and the Bible said her blood splattered the walls of Jezreel and the dogs ate her up so he thought about it later he said go and bury her for she's a king's daughter and when he went back out there with nothing but a skull and the palm of a hand, now God, God, let me tell you, when sin is finished, it brings it forth death. Come on here and talk back to me. Oh yeah, you have you having your fun in the sun now. But let me tell you something. You gonna have to stand before God. I'm gonna have to stand before God. I'm gonna have to give an account of every deed done in my mortal body. You gonna have to give an account of every deed done in your mortal body. Now God, guess where it's gonna come? It's gonna come a time of separation. I got all of the sheep on the right and all of the ghosts are gonna be on the left and on the right. He's going to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. In a doubt, into the jaw of the Lord. But if you're on the left side, he's going to say, be thou, be cast into everlasting darkness. You're going to hell, and the smoke of your torment is going to send them forever and ever because you love sin. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And I want you all to hear me today. Sin is not worth it. Sin is not worth it. So we don't know about party. Solomon knew about it. Oh yeah, Solomon knew about party. Now God, Solomon said, listen, I had men singers and women say, I had men of them. Not a single, singer. And I didn't have a pool, I had pools. And it was Solomon's that said, all of that was vanity and vexation of the spirit. I don't care what you accumulate on this side. You can't take it with you when it's all said and done on this side. And so this is why I'm preparing now for my moving day. Because you know that the songwriter said, this old house is leaning. But oh my God, but for me to live is Christ. But for me to die is gain. And I escape, my God, this temporary life. My God, and prepare for eternal life in the glory and the bliss of heaven. My God, you're not going to get there by accident. You got the purpose in your heart. My God, that you're going all the way with the Lord. And you gonna have, you got the purpose in your heart that having done all the stuff that I'm going to stand there for. I'm not going to look to the left. I'm not going to look to the right. But I'm looking to the hills. I will come in my health and come in my strength for all of my health. All of my health coming down from above. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Woo. Why will you die? Oh, house of Israel. God said, well, I done prepared a way for you. Why will you die? And you know, and I like it about the four lepers. You know, when they was a, you was leprous, they separated you from the community. They had their own little colony where they live because they was diseased. But oh my God, but these lepers, 
They sat down and they, they come up with a resolve. Said, listen, why sit we here until we die? When we can rise up and do something about our condition. See, if we stay here, we're going to die anyway. If we go into the city, it, if they kill us, well, we're going to die anyway. But if they spare us, now we can live. Come on and bless them. They got to know that, hey, you got to come to a resolve that there's another way out. It's a way out of sin. And see, this is what's wrong. People think that you have to stay bound. You don't have to stay bound. Listen, I didn't come from heaven. My God, God saved me. My God, I smoked my dope. I popped my pill. My God, I drunk my wine. Come on and talk back to me up in here. My God, I changed my women. But I thank God, my God, that I found him whom my soul loveth. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody found him whom their soul love it? Oh God, I was such a, oh bless him, bless him. In the songs of Solomon, he said, I will went through the streets uh, and I was trying to find uh, him whom my fourth soul love it and I could not find him. And then he said, oh my God. He said, I cried at the watchman's house. And my God said, can you tell me where I can find him whom my soul love it? The watchman couldn't tell it. But he kept searching. He kept searching. And then finally had a testimony. I found him. Whom my soul loveth. My God, you just keep on searching. Don't you stop at this search. If you're not there, uh -uh. no, you try to find a place where the truth is at. That'll keep you going strong. My God, because you're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. You're going to have your trials. You're going to have your tests. But I need somebody that's not going to compromise. My God, and give pity. My God, to my circumstance and situation. I'm going to be just like God. What to Elijah? What are you doing in the cave? <laughs> they want somebody to feel sorry for them. That's what I hate about those tones. I'm going through and, 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 and he's getting on me. I want to know why you're doing what you're doing in the cave. One moment you were saying today I'm going to show my face. The next time you're hiding in the cave. You experience the power of God. So now, he is hiding in the cave. Elijah said, what are you doing in the cave? That woman, Jezebel, she didn't kill all of the prophets. And she seek my life. Elijah, what are you doing in the cave? God, you didn't hear me. I said that woman, Jezebel, and killed all of the prophets. And I'm the only one left, and she seeks my life. <sighs> Let me talk to you, you cow with you. I got 7,000 that have not bowed a knee to Baal. So in other words, you got to get yourself up out of here. You want somebody to compromise and feel sorry for you. My God, when you didn't brought this stuff on yourself. I want to know, how did you get there? If you were standing up on the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ, how did you get there? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of sound mind. Somebody ought to bless him right there. Woo. But I heard him say something. Having done all this, thing, keep on standing. Having done all to stand, look at your neighbor and say, keep on standing. Keep on standing. Why you want me to keep standing? Because he that shall come will come. 
I go, he gonna show up after a while. He gonna show up after a while. I go, but you got to be able to endure something. I go, you got to know that you're not walking in this thing all by yourself. And you hear David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. Why not, David? Because thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They do comfort me, my God, and I want I know this, uh, that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us uh, and gave himself for us. Bless him right there, somebody. <laughs> Listen. Stay with the truth. Stay with the truth. Because you need this unadulterated gospel to encourage you. You need the little promptings of the word of God to give you that little gentle nudge that you need to keep you moving forward. You need that, that little small, still voice that's saying, be of good cheer. I'm here to deliver you. You see, sometimes we're complaining so much and complaining so loud. We have not created an environment so the voice could speak. Let's not be heard. And so we, we got to keep ourselves, our God, in, in a place, our God, of serenity. Even though we're going through something, the peace of God has not dissipated. The peace of God is still there. And you got to learn how to have peace in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tests. And I heard the songwriter say, that when life troubles come your way, you lift your hand to God and say, Hallelujah, anyhow. And somebody ought to bless him, anyhow. Somebody ought to give him the praise, anyhow. Oh, bless his holy name. I might be going through now, but glory be to God. I'm going to bless him, anyhow, because I know he's going to bring me out. 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 Bless him up in here, somebody. Say it. Yes. Woo. Let me tell you something. I'm going to be finished here. Because the devil fight us when prayers are not answered immediately. But God told Daniel. So God answered your prayer 21 days ago. But Satan hindered. But I, I like what he said. He said Satan hindered. He didn't say Satan stopped it. He just hindered it. He just held it up for a little while. But while he are in the process, you just keep on waiting. And my, son, my soul loves Jesus. Hallelujah. And said, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and according to his glory. Bless his holy name. They're going to be all right. After a while, you might have to cry sometime. Anybody been there? I got you have to shed some tears sometime. But I got news for you. Look at your neighbor and say, weeping may endure for a night. But oh my God, look at him say, can you hold on to the morning? Can you hold on to the morning? Can you hold on to the morning? Hold on to the morning. Walk to the morning because joy gonna come. Sunday. Will you just hold on just a little while longer and Jesus will make you stronger. Ha, ha, I'm almost Sunday. Do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Help is on the way. Woo! Oh, bless him. Help is on the way. Sunday. I don't care what the devil in hell say. Help is on the way. Hey. 
Hey! Woo! Oh, Lord, bless him. Just, you just keep holding on. Okay, God just said he didn't feel your pain. He didn't have seen your tears. But you just keep on holding on. And I heard him say, he shall wipe all of the tears from your eyes. But you got to have a mind just to hold on. And let me tell you something. I don't care how you have fallen. I don't have a problem with a person that have fallen. I have a problem when you refuse to get up. I'm getting ready to close. Listen, I like Rocky Five. I don't care nothing about the, the whole movie. Just that ending. When Tommy gone, he challenged Rocky to a fight in the alley. Man, that youngster was beating that old champion up. He was putting the beat down on. But while he was laying there in his defeated state, he could hear his trainer say, get up, you bum. Get up, you bum. He just needed that nudge to get him back on his feet. The, Yo, Tommy, one more round. One more round. In other words, you should have did what you were going to do the first time. One more round. Devil, you should have destroyed me when you had me down. One more round. One more round. Oh, bless his holy name. Man, he got up and he put a beat down on it. He put a beat down on it. My God, you shake yourself. That which have the hour but to destroy you. You get yourself up. You get yourself up. Look at your neighbor and say, get up. Get up. Get up. Get up from your defeated state. Get up. Get up. Woo. Get up. You might have been down, but you don't have to stay down. Your life might have been messed up, but it doesn't have to stay messed up. Let me say this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because some of us are down in our spirits. But God has proven you. When he took Israel through the wilderness 40 years, Look at your neighbor and say, it was just a test. It was just a test. Oh, bless him. I just wanted to prove you. I just wanted to prove you. My, see what you keep my commandments or not. Even though you were going through tough times. Even though you were going through the valley. Oh, God, I just wanted to prove you. It's just a test. So when the devil come in with his mess, you just tell him it's just a test. This is just a test. And you just keep on holding on. I got heaven done all the stand. You stand there for it. Now do me a favor. Look at your neighbor and say, keep hanging on. You can keep hanging on. And not only that, just say, hang on in there. 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 So God trying to bring us somewhere. This is why I'm saying stay with the truth. Stay with the truth. Everything that you need and everything that I need is in the word of God. And 
And God going to bless your life. God going to bless your life. And I want to ask everyone to stand. Every head bow. Every eye closed. Oh, bless him. 